Daniel, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Jeff. You're one of the few people we heard a lot of publicity about the Church of Scientology. That's the one Tom Cruise, probably his most famous member. They opened a, what we were told, a very uh, swanky, to use that Dublin phrase, National Affairs Office in Dublin's Merrion Square in October last. That's right, yeah. People want to know what was on it, what was it for. You've actually been in it. Yes, yeah. Um, before Christmas, well, personally, just my, uh, about myself, I've been looking into... Um, a lot of things that were demonised in in society, you know, like people say if you're cabal, it's satanic and all this sort of carry on. And I did a lot of looking into that and I found a lot of the time when you get to look into stuff, there, nothing could be further from the truth. So uh, I went down to the Abbey Street, you know, they have the office yeah, there at Abbey yeah, Street. Yeah. And uh, had a chat and they did a personality test, all very pleasant, you know. And they said, you know, you don't have to be a Scientologist, we run these courses. So uh, I uh, did one of their courses. But it's sort of uh, uh, suspending, you know, you could naturally be quite suspicious of something like that. So I thought I'd give them a fair run of things. And um, I was told it was a standalone course, just a self-improvement type course. But right. during, actually as part of the course, you, I was, uh, there was a part that was, uh, that you have to tell them your overts. And this is sort of like a sin. You may have heard of this, something that you might be ashamed of or have done mm-hmm. wrong or a crime or something like that. So um, that wouldn't really have run in my mind concurrently with a standalone course because they say they keep those things for auditing you in the future. You may have heard that term auditing yeah, in relation yeah. to Scientology. And um, so I, I, I sort of just said, OK, right, um, I just put down a few things, nothing that could really be used against me, you know. And uh, one of their big things is you don't have to have any faith in this. You do the course, you go out and test it in the real world, and then you see if, if it works. You have nothing to do with Scientology, nothing to do with Dianetics, just a course. But of course, when I finished the course, then suddenly the rules changed and it was to get me straight on to another course. Right. And um, during uh, talking to the person who, who um, and I, I spoke to who recommended the first course that I had done, and I was saying, well, I should test it, shouldn't I? And he said, oh, no, no, go straight on to the next course. And um, in this co- sort of trying not to be pushy, but sort of being a bit pushy, he said, look, sorry for being pushy, but... Um, I had a fella in here a while ago, a Muslim man, and he had done a course with me. And he went off, was thinking of going off like yourself, and he didn't come back for a while. And the next thing I, I'd heard in the papers that he was killed in Syria. So I thought it was quite a hard sell. But uh, to get to the main branch, mm-hmm. um, I got a phone call from one of their UK operators. Uh, and everyone is very pleasant now, Joe. I just, yeah, just, I know uh, that, yeah. 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 Um, and they said, would I like to have a tour of the new building and such, and that they have exciting plans for the year. So I went up to the to the building, and I did the tour. This is Marion, uh, Marion Square. In Marion Square, yeah. Lovely yeah. buildings around there, as I'm sure you've been in a few of them yourself. Yeah. Um, so there was this tour thing, but um, I sort of started getting the impression, a lot of people knew who, who I was, and there was some sort of proposition about to be made to me that I had no idea of. People were coming up and saying, oh, have you said yes yet? Have you said yes yet? And... You know, that was, uh, and very a lot of, lot of flattery says, oh, the famous uh, Daniel and, um, oh, Irish people are very nice and you're, you're very clever mm-hmm. and all this, which, you know, is a bit odd. And that, that happened a lot of, uh, a good few times. And I had no idea what was going to be proposed to me. Um, and the leader from over in the UK came up and again even gave him a bit of personal attention. So this is about three people working with me. So it was a little bit overwhelming emotionally, as you can imagine. And uh, so what is, when it cut, cut down to the chase, I had a contracts popped in front of me. By the way, what's Marion Square like? What's the oh, well, it's very nice. It's quite a modern building inside. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't, I don't know if it would exactly be true to its historical uh, look, hmm. but it's, uh, it's sort of modern. They've got uh, television screens with video presentations on them as you walk around the place. And were you, only, were you the only one there that day? No, well, there was other Scientologists. No, uh, I mean, were you, the, were you the only person that they were interested in in terms of... Oh, yeah, of I was just the sole... Um, lay person or actually they have a funny term for it they call uh, people who aren't part of the organisation WOGs which mm. uh, I had to inform them was actually probably a, a term they shouldn't use because it would be considered no, quite really. racist you know, given, given that so many of them American they'd hardly, they hardly that, can't, that did not come as a surprise to them well I would have thought yeah. and especially okay. working in the UK cause ok that, what um, did they want you to sign well, it was a contract that uh, now hold in mind I had just done one course mm-hmm. that was about you know you know life improvement just to do it it was fairly like the, the, the course itself apart from that thing about writing down these things you might be embarrassed about was a lot of common sense and a lot of stuff you would have seen in other philosophies you know but the contract was to say basically it was like a profession of belief 
a profession of faith to say that I believe in... Uh, I've got it here in front of me, if you yeah, like. Yeah, read it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, it's a religious pledge. I am familiar with the scripture of Scientology, religion, particularly the creed of the Church of Scientology and the Code of Scientology, and I fully believe that Scientology is a religion and its teachings are religious in nature. I believe that the sacred goal of all Scientologists is to help each... Uh, begin and regain full spiritual potential. I believe that the path of greater spiritual awareness was discovered by L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, and is set forth, written, and recorded in the words to make up the Scientology scriptures. Now, as you can imagine, after a month-long course, even if I was very positive, I would in no way be able to say, yeah. yes, I believe all this. And then it goes down for the volunteering part, and it says, I want to devote the next, uh, and you're given the option of two and a half to five years of this lifetime to actively forwarding the work of the church. So, so what's your, if you had signed that, what, what, were you, what were you signing up to? Were you gone that day to go? It would have been, well, they, 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 oddly they stress that it's not a legal document, but, you know, a, a huge thing from their courses is about, is about honesty and ethics. And I would say if you're going to sign a document, regardless whether it's legal or not, you should mean it, you know, or else you're, you're lying. But, mm. yeah, this would have been to sign up to be a volunteer because this is what it gets down to. They're actually, they have a, a thing called an ideal church, which is, which is a church that has a certain critical mass of people in it, where they, uh, it's over a certain number. Now, they, don't, they have them in the UK, and only over here they have their, little, their two little offices. Mm-hmm. So they are looking to recruit 250 volunteers to have this set up in the next eight months. So they are going, this is one of the reasons why I, would, I contacted your show. because So, the, so the purpose of this new office in Marion Square that they've invested, I think they own the building, that they've invested an awful lot of money into the mm. Scientologists is to try and get new members. Well, they're going to try and set up a, a full-scale church now. The, the terms that they use are an ideal church. They don't have a church here at the moment. They've got the office on Marion Square. Okay. And so got, what was your... What was your f- f- you, you refused to sign the document. And how did you get out of the building? Well... As again, I was trying to give everything a fair chance, and yeah. I, I, I basically I would never sign anything under those sort of circumstances anyway. Uh, you know, like if you're a uh, timeshare presentation or whatever, and you're asked to sign on the spot, it's too emotional, you know, for you to make a decision like that. So I basically explained in a sort of a, it's not you, it's me sort of way. I said, look, you know, you're very nice, and I might feel emotional pressure from you two people being here, too, mm-hmm. and it's all very exciting, as you say, and all that. But um, I wouldn't. And they amended one of the things, the professions of faith. It, it was quite odd because they keep, kept trying to seem to downplay the contract, which sort of defeats the purpose of signing it in the first place, I would imagine. But, um, yeah, uh, so okay, I you said s- that I would never under... I, I never okay. would... I'd always give myself a little bit of time to reflect on something like this. And, uh, of course, I had to try and put it in a way that the people who, when they're trying to suck you in in this way, they don't usually like uh, direct confrontation. So I said, well, it would be dishonest of me to sign it, which it would be. And... Um, you know, I would take signing a pledge like that, legal or otherwise. Okay, and how seriously. did you get, so you just left? They didn't. Oh, well, like, we chatted for a, a little bit longer, yeah. and I said I would meet them uh, the following day, and they gave me another application for to be staff, okay. where they ask you a lot of questions. A lot of the, the stuff, uh, they actually brought me downstairs after I raised these sort of things, because the minute I read that, I said, that in a pleasant way that I could, there's no way I could sign that, even if I wanted to. But so they brought me down and showed me these tenets that they have, like that no one outside Scientology basically should be working to do with uh, anything to do with uh, emotional well-being. Or uh, a lot of the stuff is actually uh, is that's maybe one of the more sinister things. A lot of the stuff it seems to be quite it almost reads like Christianity, you know. But yeah, so so how did I get out of it? I just I think at the, I folded up the thing that they gave me and I put it in my pocket, and I said that I would think about it. And, I, of course, I was interested, and they gave me the application for staff, and then I would come back the next day and uh, take it from there. The, the, the idea was, did I, would I do it there and then on the spot, sign the, the rest of it? And you, you said know? no. Would Have they been in touch with you since? Well, now, they have been in touch now, but um, I don't, I, 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 later that evening I went and I sent an email saying that I felt that this whole course was false pretenses and all that. They haven't uh, got in touch since hmm. they were, became aware of my disapproval. So they haven't been hounding me or anything like that. I'm not going okay. to. Uh, what, what type, in the situation. course you did, what, what, who were the other people on it? Oh well, it was just myself. There were other people in the office uh, doing other things, like doing. No, when you did the initial, when you did the personality test, which is what the Scientologists do, you, th- you then said you signed up for fifty quid for a course. Yes. And who else was on the course? Oh no, there was a one-to-one thing. You basically oh, you're given the course. Wow. You okay. sit down in a reading room. Oh, sorry, not one to one. Look, with someone sitting with you, the other people like doing their other things in the room, and then there's a, a sort of a supervisor there who you can ask questions of. So I would have been in a room with people doing other bits and bobs, 
and uh, while I was doing this course. And then okay, and why do you think they flew in the leader of the Scientologists in the UK to meet you? Well, I don't think they flew in. I don't think I was flown in specifically to meet me. I think what they're doing now is they're doing a hard recruitment because they need to get so many people within the next eight months. They need 250 people within the next eight okay, months, well, apparently. That's, that's interesting for people to know. Well, it's very important. Was there any the Irish... Di- sorry, I'm going to cry. But, Danny, was there any Irish people there? Oh, yeah, there's Irish people there. There was uh, there's a couple of Irish people there. There's a, there's a number of foreign people there as well, and Europe from European... I think there were European and other places. So there's, a, there's, there's quite a mix there. And if you walked in, you would just see a fairly happy enough sort of group of people, you know. Okay. It's the sort of deceptive nature of the sale... It's, um, you know, like like a lot of people will be somewhere like that. It's to get your foot in the door. But one thing I thought was particularly sinister about the course was it asked you for this list of things that you might be embarrassed about. Yeah, the overts, yeah. The overts, yeah. yeah. And as I said, this was sold to me as a standalone course, but these overts are for future auditing, which is part of Scientology, because it was stressed to me that this wasn't part of Scientology. This was just a standalone course. And then, of course, when I finished the course, suddenly it was... uh, where they had told me before, you test this out in the real world, and if it works for you, great, and you come back to us to do another course, and if it doesn't, not. But when I finished it then, it was suddenly the rules had changed, and the next course that I was set up to do was to how to be able to recognise people I shouldn't have in my life. Okay. Which is, you know, now that... Uh, at the time... It, sound, it, sounds, like, it sounds like your re- re- reaction is that you've already done that course successfully, yeah. and, and these were people you did not want in your life. Well, it, as I say, I tried to keep uh, as yeah, open I know as did. possible okay. because they were... Uh, but you did say I, no, and you are saying yeah. to me, I see you in your communication here, I would advise people to stay away from Scientology. Yes, I, I would definitely, like, they dropped okay. the hammer on me after, a, I'd only done about a month's, cor- a month's course, which I had sort of rushed through, and at this stage, they were trying to drop this religious uh, pledge on me, and it was, okay. if you someone had been no, finessed anyway. for a little bit longer... Or if someone was in a vulnerable position, say they were recovering from a, a marriage breakup, or if they were feeling very low about themselves, I could say that they could end up signing up to something if they were emotionally vulnerable, and it would work out very badly for them. Okay. And this is this is my sort of concern with this this love bombing and this emotional. Okay, emotional well it's good to hear. I, I, nobody seemed to know what the new Office of National Affairs was about in. In, oh, in uh, Merrion Square, that's where they liaise well, with the well, public and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Daniel, thanks indeed. That's Daniel talking about the Church of Scientology, his recent experience. Talk to Joe on 1850 715 815. And Joe and RT.ie, another councillor, Councillor John Heron in Waterford. John, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Joe, well, and, and thanks uh, for uh, making me old, me father happy there one day he interviewed him. He was one of the bodyguards there. Uh, Kennedy when he came over that time. Oh, very good. But John, yeah. you, you, and he was in a lot of the photographs, And but you found yourself in a photograph and it, it looked like you were promoting Scientology. How did that happen? It's very funny, really. I got a call from the City Hall to say that uh, I had an engagement down. They were stuck, they forgot about something and they were in a panic and they said, could I go home and get the, 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 the chain? You were mayor, the, the you were mayor of Waterford at the time, yeah. yeah. I still am and, and I was there. Okay. I went home, got the chain, put on the suit as you do. I was told, got a quick briefing over the phone that it was an anti-drugs campaign. There was a band downtown entertaining the crowds, but I say a few words and signed the petition, an anti-drugs uh, petition. So we get very strongly against the drugs and water. So, of course, we went down and we met these people. Absolutely lovely people. Okay. A very good band, and they were baiting us out. A sunny day, everything going well, not a bother. And they invited me up to sign the petition, and I got in all the snaps as mayors do. And... Uh, very nice people. You couldn't meet nice around and, and very jolly people. Up and some of them were mm-hmm. in their 50s and they were dressed in their ass ah, ah, skirts, you know, that the cheerleader stuff. Okay. And they were bouncing around the place having good fun and everybody was having a good time. And um, I signed the petition and just when it was over, they said, oh, you might get some people complaining about Scientology. And I said, well, what, what does that to do with anything? And she said, oh, people say we're tied into that, but we're not. So I said, you're not a bother. I said, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. Never asked a person to religion in my life. So I just thought no, nothing about it. The next thing I was getting emails to say that I was promoting Scientology in Ireland. I'm sure nothing further from the truth, you know. But sir, what can you do? You so, photograph your photographs. What can you do? And did they... You say it was a very... It was a very um, upbeat event. But yep. did, did they did they actually say to you you were... Like, who, who brought up the word Scientology? They did, yeah, yeah. They yeah. said you might get some correspondence. But don't worry about it. Uh, from people saying we're tied in with Scientology, and I said, 
But I was, you know, I just said, well, so what's that got to do with me? Like, and but they said they're and not, but you subsequently, so not. But you yeah, subsequently and, discovered that they were. Yeah, I got a phone. Uh, somebody, I got a few emails telling, saying, I have Chin Fainer, disgrace, involved in Scientology. I said, I went down as the mayor of Waterford, as I do. Mm. I don't vet anybody. I've never had, and the council don't have a policy. You know, we have a Chinese professors in there. One day you could have somebody from Peru, the next day you just, the way it works his way around. And they were just sent down to meet these people, and I did, and they were nice, and it went well, and everybody was happy, and it was a good old show they put on. And next thing I see him on different sites, he was sending me this and that, saying, I oh, know Scientology, John, you're tied in, and that was all, looking for order from the show, you know. Okay. okay. I was invited to Dublin for the launch of the new offices, all right, and I declined, I just said, no, nah, so I wouldn't be going, no, because I thought it was a bit underhanded, but they didn't. But when they weren't up front, I thought it was a bit, you know, that we should be really be up front with people, you know. Okay, okay, John, yeah. Councillor John Hearn and Warford, thanks indeed. 51551. Joe Duffy! Talk to Joe on 1850 715 815. Rod Keller is a journalist in the States. He was listening to the, our Scientology story, and for, well, you, you've been, been investigating, Rod, the Scientology links to Dublin and number 96, Merrion Square. Why have they decided to go up market? Uh, I think that Marion Square is very sentimental for Scientologists because L. Ron Hubbard had an office there briefly. Uh, it was a different number street. They would have preferred to have his old building, but that was not available. And uh, there's a push in, in all countries to expand, 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 even if the population doesn't support that, that sort of effort. And how, mu- how much money have they spent on Marion Square? I think they spent 400,000 euros to buy it and probably the same amount to renovate it. And where does the Scientology money come from? It comes from donations from parishioners. Uh, sometimes they're called fixed donations for services. But a lot of times it's just give us money because we're helping to save the planet. And they can, they can ask for donations of tens or hundreds of thousands of either pounds or euros or dollars, depending on where you live. And the photograph that Councillor John Hearn inadvertently found himself in when he was uh, acting as uh, well, he's assistant mayor of Waterford at the time, is this a, is this a common ploy that they try and inveigle people into snaps? <clears throat> yes, it's called, uh, they call them opinion leaders. And opinion leaders are recruited as, quote, allies. Now, the person may not know that they're an ally or, a perver- or an opinion leader, but uh, they do surveys in order to determine who the opinion leaders in a community are, and then they actively recruit them as allies. Uh, and they are considered actual Scientology celebrities at that point. Whether they know it or not, they're in the same category as Tom Cruise and John Travolta for statistics purposes. And are they still doing their personality tests as a way of finding out who might be open, say to, to use that phrase, to Scientology? Oh, yes, that's, a, that's done worldwide, the Oxford Capacity Analysis, which has nothing to do with any Oxford University, but it's a 300-question test that's supposed to test your personality. But it has ridiculous questions like, do you enjoy looking through train timetables or do you often feel sad or things like that uh, the answers are all online if you want to get a perfect score okay well our caller daniel who this happened in the last week uh, abbey street and then marion square he said the, the the sting was they wanted him to sign a contract what would what would have happened to him if he had jo- signed that contract he would have been basically a staff member he might have received maybe 20 euros a week and he would have been doing learning how to and then performing the stress tests and personality tests. Or he could just be hired to be a janitor. They need somebody to sweep the, sweep the floors, you know. And then, okay, I, I do that for a year and then I want to leave. What happened to me? Well, you just, as he said, the contract is either for two and a half years or five years. And that's the, the standard around the world. If you leave early and you've received any training Mm -hmm. or any courses for free, they may attempt to enforce what's called a freeloader debt, which they would present you with a bill for hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Say that again. It's called a freeloader debt. That's correct. And what this is way... Usually it's it's for Sea Org members who've signed the billion-year contract, but it can also be for people who leave early on a a two-and-a-half or five-year staff contract. And they say, the Scientologists say, you owe us money. 
Yes, well, they, it's not a legal obligation, but uh, you would, because you've been there for a year or two, you might feel some sort of moral obligation. Or if you have friends or family members that are remaining behind, you might feel pressure that you have to pay in order to remain connected with your family. Okay, well, they're, they're, they're back. They're very active here again, Rod, as you know. And well, do, I don't think they're very successful. I heard about the, the goal for 280 new members in eight months. I don't think they'll reach more than 10% of that. But they are always hopeful that they're going to be expanding and the world will... The eventual goal, is to, they could say, is to clear the planet, which is to get basically everybody in the entire world through Scientology processing. Okay, okay. Well, that's, that's, thanks indeed, Rod, for that update. That's Rod Keller, a journalist uh, in Philadelphia, and he's been investigating Marion Square and what's happening. We well, you know a bit more. Talk to Joe on 1850 715 815. Daniel spoke to us yesterday about being stopped on Abbey Street in Dublin by the Scientologists who are still there and then being brought to this new magnificent new office they have and they bought and have refurbished in Merrion Square, their National Affairs office, and then being asked to talk about his O or to reveal his overts, which apparently are things you might have done wrong in your life, he misdemeanors or whatever and um, then he thought he was doing a self-improvement course and then they tried to get him to sign a five-year contract John McGee has contacted us John good afternoon good afternoon John did you sign that contract by the way did you sign I did I signed it I signed a two and a half year contract but the fact that it's not legally binding meant that I didn't really have to adhere to it very strictly and and Daniel's point that they what this point about overts that they looked for yeah they're they're very much into getting um, certain indiscretions from your past down on paper so that they may use it against you in later life uh, if you tend to, if you cross them at any way uh, in the future. They're particularly interested in any sexual um, misdemeanors, especially if you've had a gay experience or if you've had any sexual relations with an animal, that kind of thing. They're, they're oh very God, much upset with sex, yeah. And, and, and how, long, how long were you in, well, how long were you a Scientologist? Oh, I'm embarrassed to say I was a Scientologist. I dabbled in Scientology, let me say, from 2005 until, as far as they were concerned, 2011. But I, I clocked out mentally in 2008. So maybe two and a half, three years full on with them. And then the latter years were spent spying on them, basically, and feeding information out to the anonymous group who protest against them. You were, you were involved in that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And so what was it like being a Scientologist? Uh, it's, um, they try and encapsulate you completely into their fold and permeate every aspect of your life. They want to know who your friends are, what they think of Scientology, what your family yeah. think. They they wish you to live in communal situations with other Scientologists, preferably. And if you are in contact with anybody who opposes their group, they they advise you to disconnect from them, be it family members, best friends, whatever. That's why they're responsible for the breakup of families and the destruction of relationships. Now, another caller told us that um, this thing of, of offering you work or whatever, um, that if you if you leave before the end of the contract... Uh, yeah, freeloader debt. They, um, freeloader debt. Explain yeah, that to us. Uh, freeloader debt. They train you to be a staff member. I know, like I say, I didn't um, abide by the contract, okay, so yeah. I was never a staff member. Officially, I was more uh, public going in on course. But yeah, the freeloader debt is when they train you up on the courses and you decide to leave, they provide, uh, they furnish you with a debt which can range into uh, tens of thousands of euro. But, uh, you know, it's not legally binding, but they hold it over you that your future, your, your eternity, uh, this lifetime and your subsequent lifetimes will be affected if you do not uh, contribute to this debt, do not pay this debt off. They believe in uh, past lives and uh, future lives, that's the kind of... Um, angle they come from so they hold uh, the threat of an eternity of misery over you now like you have to be really sucked in you have to spend about a hundred thousand euro to uh, subscribe to these beliefs so i wasn't privy to those i found out those later on uh, when i left and how do you leave people say it's not easy to leave it's not easy no they in ireland they've learned their lesson after the mary johnson case when they were taken for two million back in 2003 but yeah in other countries they they stalk you, basically. They'll uh, wait outside your home, go to your workplace, make anonymous phone calls to your employers, telling them they're, you, they use your overts and withholds. They use the information you provided there to 
paint a picture of you that is, you know, exaggerated to employers, like they say you're a sexual pervert, um, that kind of thing. So it affects, uh, they try and get you fired from your job. They try and uh, basically break you down because you're deemed as a suppressive person uh, if you go against them, and therefore they yeah, have it but in the But John, what, what propels people who are in, who are Scientologists for a long time, and there's quite a few of them, yeah, well, what they, propels them in their in their enthusiasm? Because they're promised that they can be whoever they want to be, be what they want to be, and choose their next incarnation because they subscribe to the belief that they have lived countless lifetimes before and will live countless lifetimes again. So the form of spiritual counseling in which they engage is called auditing that can provide them with the means to determine their next lifetime and the lifetime after that. Now, like I say... You and I wouldn't be privy to that just walking in off the street. That's uh, discovered later on after you've paid, uh, after you've remortgaged your house, basically, which is also what they encourage you to do heavily. And did you, uh, d when you left, did you owe them money or did they owe you money? No, no they, I spent ten and a half grand uh, with them. No, nobody owed anybody money. But yeah, I, would, I wouldn't have mind um, retrieving it. But uh, no, it, it didn't happen. Okay. Are there many so, Irish people still, uh, many Irish people sci are Scientologists? Um, less, I'm being generous here yeah. but when I say less than 40 but they are absolutely hardcore are, I was, they, uh, are I they based here or is there Irish people abroad? With, there know? are some Irish people abroad in the elite wing which is called the Sea Organisation um, they, they sign a billion year contract to come back in subsequent lifetimes and keep working for Scientology yeah there are several Irish people abroad doing that in their Sea Org bases all around the world but then they're in Ireland itself I'm saying they're less than 40 people. They're not all Irish, so okay. about 25, 25 are Irish citizens, Irish nationals. And many, um, any idea how many abroad would be originally, you know, originally Irish? Very, uh, just a small diaspora, maybe. But okay. they wouldn't, uh, yeah, it would be of Irish extraction, maybe. So what do you say to people who are stopped in, stopped in I'd Abbey say, Street, do come in and do the personality test like Daniel was? He, was, he said he was, there was a few things happening in his life. He, he said, we, we, we do a self-help course, would you like to yeah. do that? And who wouldn't say yes to that? Yeah, of course, that's what, that's what I went in for. But they have painted a very glossy picture of what Scientology is on the outside to get you in the door. And then the cage comes down, so to speak. Um, I'd say run a mile. But you can't tell people that because that was, uh, that was said to me and it only encouraged me to go in. So... Um, but yeah, run a mile. That's, okay. uh, it's, you see back, they restrict your flow of information also. They encourage you not to look at the internet, not to read the newspapers, just in case you see anything negative about, about Scientology. Now their story is that if you read anything negative, it will impede your progress in Scientology. But the real story is they don't want you to find out the truth and run. Okay. And this new, uh, Dan, you might have heard Daniel's description. Oh, yeah. This new, this, this new office in uh, Marion Square. Marion Square, yeah. Yes. Uh, sounds incredible. Yeah, but they didn't pay for it with Irish funds. I can guarantee you that because every Irish member is up to their oxters in debt because of fake phony bank loans, which they're encouraged okay, to okay, pay. Okay, really? okay. So yeah, it's, it's, funded, it's funded by the American wing. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, John, John, what are you doing now? Like, oh, I presume, I, I, what, is being a Scientologist, by the way, is it a full-time occupation? It is, oh, yeah. They, oh, well, wow. I mean, okay. if you have to, they, they want you in there at every opportunity, even if you're not on course, they want you to check in and socialize with them just so you don't fall back into okay. the into the wog world, as they call it. Yeah, that was another word that came up yesterday. That yeah. Was, okay. yeah, they use a lot of derogatory terms against, yeah, against non-Scientologists, against homosexuals, against uh, homeless people, like anybody who is in a situation of impoverty. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. What, what do they say about homeless people? Homeless people, that they're yeah. degra degraded beings. And they deserve what they get because, oh yeah, they, they, they're punished because of sins they committed in previous lifetimes. Okay, okay. And now you are, you have yeah. made the status of suppressive person, Joe, because you're running a show that is speaking uh, negatively about them. So you are now in the bad books also, and you'll be spoken about. I know they've done it. They've spoken about me before. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. And yeah. people are yeah. entitled to do that. Okay, John, John McGee. Thanks indeed, John, for that insight. No